So let's talk a little bit about the hand. Um, what I have for you here, move that over a little bit, um, and I'm gonna move that over, are two tracings that I did of my hand, um, my left hand, one and two. Okay, to give you a little bit of an idea of proportion, how things how things are divvied up and how they divide. Um, so basically what I did was I did a tracing, okay? And then um, I started to locate knuckles. And I want you to see the arc of the knuckles, all right, as you move across, across the hand. One's over here a little bit. Take a look at the proportion here, you know, between your wrist and the top knuckles of your fist. You know, basically, it's close to a square, but other things that are important about this, um, I want you to consider, you know, how it sits or how it fits in the square. Some places it's cut into, some places, you know, it's not big enough, all right? And some places it, it extended beyond. If I close my fingers like that, um, it would fit more comfortably into that shape. All right, so let's just talk about a couple of these things and how they operate a little bit. The first thing I want you to notice is the arc of the knuckles. And how that kind of swings around. Check out the width of the wrist here. You know, how much wider it is, how much the far, fatty part of the hand is, or how far the thumb extends. Now, let's talk about a few of the parts. Um, in here, these are the carpals. They come in two rows. Okay, and they attach just, the, they're just located just beyond the wrist. All right. Um, Then we have the metacarpals, which are the long bones of the fingers. Okay. Make it a little darker so you can see it. Then we have three different sets of uh, phalanx, phalanxes, okay? The fingers themselves. Um, we have the proximal phalanx. We have uh, the medial phalanx. And then we have the tips, which are the distal phalanxes. Now the thumb just has two. Okay. So it doesn't have a third, third end. To it. it doesn't have a third knuckle or a second knuckle to give you a third tip of the finger. Here with the fist, let's just take a little look at it. So we still have our square, and I actually gave you a, a cross section of it that way. I actually gave you that so you can go from point to point on it. Okay, so I found an axis for it. I went corner to corner first. Here's the center axis. Um, and I laid the fingers down a little bit. I want you to see how I edged out the fingers a little bit. Because there's something I want you to think about here. If you notice, each of these fingers has a dotted line. That's where the plane shifts from the top to the side. It's a rounded form. That's why I drew it the way I did. I want you to see it as a rounded form. But this would be considered side. This would be considered top. I also think it's important to know, you know, how much space you gave up when you closed your hand. So, considering that, I'm gonna to go to a second drawing that I have going right now, I want you to see. And I think it's an important drawing for you to know. All right, so, this is a drawing I've made, it's a demonstration drawing, but I want you to be aware of it. If you see a dotted line in this demonstration drawing, that means it's seeing, I want you to see something transparently. So 
this shape in here is that part of my hand on the outside. Okay, so I want you to be aware of that. So that's seen transparently. This is actually seen through my wrist. If I had my wrist, my hand cut off at my wrist, that's actually seeing how the joint attaches itself. Okay, you have the you know, two bones of your forearm and how they attach in here. Now, the easiest way to do this is when you're first learning how to draw a hand, keep it geometric, all right? That's the thing I think is most important is lean on geometry, don't look for parts, all right? Try to say, try to stay with holes. And basically what we have is one plane moving this way, another plane moving that way. So we're going from here across your hand to down. So there's a change in direction that takes place. Okay, so you have this big arc that happens here, arc of the knuckles here, arc of the knuckles there. Go back to this. So you can see it, I'll turn it this way. So arc of the knuckles here, you know, arc of the knuckles there. I would look for individual sizes for the fingers, individual lines to, de to define the fingers a little bit. And you separate them like that. Here's the thumb. What's interesting about the thumb, I'm gonna do the thumb now, I'm gonna shade it so you see the idea of the thumb and how it sits on the side of the, side of the wrist and the hand. And actually the thumb would wrap around if you could see inside your hand that's where your thumb is actually setting up that's where it's actually sitting um let's take a look at another drawing on this this sheet i'm going to move this one over i'm going to move this out of the way right now i want to look at this one a little bit so here i've actually indicated on this drawing the knuckles where I've acted out that arc that arc this this arc in here is an interesting one so you have one for where the knuckles begin or the knuckles end okay that's this line right here okay but there's a second line you have to be aware of and that's where you get the plunge in your fingers because you're also having to think about, you have to think about the, the depth, okay? How wide your hand is in here, okay? There's two lines here, inside, outside. Now you can't see the inside part of that, but what you can see is the side.
starting out very light. I mean, I'm using a 5B pencil, but I'm barely touching the paper. Um, I can push it where I want to make it darker so I can see a little bit more value. Whether it might be a crease or a fold. side of my thumb. Think of the knuckles almost like little mountains, okay? The knuckle that's closest to you when you're drawing it, if you're drawing it here, it's closest to the center. Okay, and the center would be defined that way, that way. So here's the center. As it moves away from you, the center is gonna move with it. And it's gonna wrap a little bit. So you're more likely to see a little bit of the side, a little more of the side, and then a lot of the side as you go away from it. If you look at your fingers, they're a little bit flat on the top, but they're round underneath. I'll show you a little trick that I like to do for that. Because I used a darker pencil, I'm able to move the graphite around a little bit. Catch it on the pencil and then just slide it across the paper. Draw with it a little bit, if you will.
this is the webbing in your finger right here. See how I rendered that? I did that with the eraser and a little bit of an edge. Um, it would still connect to the other side. It's got to hold together. You get more overlap over here, so you'll see less of the webbing here. There's no separation, so you really won't see the webbing, webbing open up, but you still have that line. I'm going to want to soften that a little bit. And then over to here. Towards your pinky, same deal. In here, you get a fold, and because you get a fold at the knuckle, anytime you get a fold, you're gonna, you know, something compresses, something's also gonna get pushed out a little bit, and that's gonna happen right there. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of an excess. Let me see if I can get that sharper for you. I don't like that being that wide. I want it to be skinnier. That's better. Like that. Um, and then I might draw down into it. That way, go back over it. Catch a little bit of a highlight because it's going to be catching light because it's at a slightly different angle. You can always take that away if you think it's too much. That highlight also might, this little piece of flesh also might cast a little bit of shadow, so be aware of that. bit of a different pigment towards the middle of your finger so even if it's in light so that's how I deal with the hand um, you know trace it first Try tracing it. Try getting used to where the points are. Open your fingers up and then find these spots as you go. And I think you'll have some success with it.